All right, guys, I'm sitting up underneath the Silverado here. Um, there is a problem that seems pretty common with these Chevy and GM vehicles is uh, the ABS light and the brake light will come on. Now, mine comes on periodically. And when you look at the ABS codes, I don't remember the code it pulls. I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but... Basically, it's intermittent, and I think with some soldering, you can typically fix it. What's, what it is, is the, the electronic brake control module, which we're right under the driver's door. And that up there is your ECBM. Now, what you got to do, there's four Torx, one two and two on the other side I believe they're Torx 20 you got to get those out and then you lift straight up and this after you, well after you disconnect these two connectors and there's a connector on the other side you lift that straight up and then you can get that whole plastic piece with the the board and the servo and the uh, relay and all that stuff out so let me get that out and then we will proceed further. But while I'm under here, <coughs> I told you guys the bottom of this truck is really rust free just about. That's the front. I just changed the oil. The bottom of the Bottom of the bed and everything, there's no rust at all on it. Frame rail's got a little bit of surface rust, but really that's it. Nothing bad. So yeah, not bad for a free truck. Rust free. Alright, let me get this brake control module out and we'll go from there. Alright guys, it was a tight squeeze. I ended up using a quarter inch socket quarter inch wrench anything I could do um, point of advice take a small piece of wire or a pick or something and clean the dirt and stuff out of those little torques or else you'll strip the heads of them I started started stripping one of them but I was able to get it out before I did too much damage um, so here it is Kelsey Hayes electronic brake control module causes causing the ABS light and the um, brake light to come on simultaneously what we're gonna do we're gonna take this apart and we're gonna I'm gonna show you what to solder through what I've researched there's other videos on this this is just how I'm doing it and we're gonna see if it fixes my problem um, you can buy a new one of these and I've seen prices anywhere from 300 bucks up to a thousand bucks or you can send these off anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Um, someone will actually do what we're about to do for you. So that's always an option as well. But from what I read, if you've got a soldering iron, you've ever soldered anything, or it, it, it's not going to be that difficult. You'll see. So once you have this out, I had to loosen the bracket holding the pump and all that stuff that was under this um, just to be able to lift it up far enough to get it off but you don't want to disconnect any of those brake lines or anything like that or else you'll have to re-bleed the system um, I believe these screws around here are uh, T8 Torx the smallest thing I found is this T9 which fits and I think it'll work but I believe the correct size is a T8 and you need something that's got length on it not a bit because a bit won't fit down in there and get those two and you might have some some other issues like that one right there on the side but let's get these out and we'll go from there
Give me just a second. Time out for tool modification. These other ones are just flopping around on me and it's going to aggravate me. Nothing a little bit of electrical tape is not going to fix though. There we go. Modify the tool. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six screws that are the T8 to get out. And now this is kind of silicone or some kind of rubber or something like that. You don't just want to pull this right off. Um, it's very possible that the sil it's silicone to the board. So what you want to do is you take a razor blade or razor knife and you just cut into that just just a little bit all the way around and you just work at it and you slowly pry up on the cover so let me work on this for a little while and we'll be back all right I got the cover removed very carefully make sure you don't crack this board by it coming off the top because you got that thermal paste on it that's a little bit sticky plus sometimes the silicone will get in and get the board so from what I've read these four pins here are the four that are problematic and also I believe this one or this one close to the sticker here so I'm gonna go and heat up my iron and any of these connections this is your relay right here any of these connections that are sticking up I'm just gonna reflow all of them and hopefully that will fix the problem got quite a few around and uh, we'll see what happens so I'm not going to try to set up the camera and solder at the same time and, and all that. I'm just going to do it and then we'll clean all this excess material off of the top and this one of the, the, the board body itself. And we'll put some new silicone on it and get it back together. So we'll be back. All right, all back together. It's reinstalled. I tightened my bracket down that I had to loosen to get it out. And we'll see what happens. I'm going to give this some time. And hopefully those lights don't come back on. Uh, one other thing you can check that's pretty easy is... Right there, let me get the light. Right there is a ground strap. And GM actually released a bulletin when the this ECBM problem starts happening. That's that's what they tell you to do is take that ground loose, clean it up real good, so you've got a good connection. So you can tell I painted it because I took it off. Hit it with a wire brush real good, cleaned it up till it was shiny, put it all back together, and just threw some paint over it to protect it. So that's it. We'll see what happens. I'll see you guys in about a week, I guess. 
All right, boys and girls, it's been a week of driving since I did the EBCM resoldering. I think before last week, I probably said that as ECBM just for no reason, and I just messed it up probably multiple times. But all week, no lights whatsoever. Since doing the radiator, nothing. No oil warning, no ABS light, no brake light. Besides, you know, the testing when you turn it on. But let's uh let's hook up the scanner I got and see if there's any ABS codes. Select vehicle to read ABS codes, yes. US 2000 truck Chevrolet Silverado 1500 four wheel drive 5.3 liter. Okay, ABS is still showing five codes. History, 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 history. Okay, so all those codes are all in history. They're not current. So, I think after some drive cycles, they'll disappear. Sweet. Cool. So yeah guys, I was a little skeptical that resoldering that was going to work. Saw a lot of people online do it. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't see any real bad looking solder joints or anything like that. No cracks. Stuff that you would typically look for in a bad solder joint. But I gotta say it fixed it and it was cheap. All you need is a soldering iron, a little bit of solder, and uh, some patience. So, hopefully this helps you guys out, and uh, we'll see you next time on Chaos Garage. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Alright guys, see ya.